Need for Madness. When I think of nostalgic games from my childhood, this is one of the first that pops into my head. At its core, it's a racing game. But unlike Forza Horizon, Mario Kart, or basically any other racing game that I know of, there's two ways to win. Of course, there's the normal pass through all the checkpoints and complete all the laps, but you also have the ability to damage and destroy cars. In the game, they call it wasting. So, as you would expect, if you want to, you can waste every single car. There's nothing else to race against, so you automatically win. A little while ago, I decided to experience the game that I spent hours of my life on. And after playing it, I found it a bit too easy. The game was not nearly as hard as I remember. Ignoring the cars and just finishing the race was very simple, and I beat it in a few hours. There was no incentive to waste at all. Honestly, I was underwhelmed. It was so close to being exactly as I remember it. The music was great for what it was trying to achieve. The cars looked unique and memorable, and it was the same buggy mess that I loved. All that was missing was the difficulty. And since there was no difficulty slider, I took it upon myself to make the game just a little bit harder. I decided to try and beat the game by only wasting. And I know what you're already thinking. If it's a win condition already, and you yourself stated the game was not that difficult. Beating the game by only wasting shouldn't be that hard, right? Before continuing, I should explain the game. There's a lot to take in, so I'll try and go as quick as possible. To damage a car, just run into them. There's multiple factors that go into it, for example, your stats versus the other car's stats, and the speed you're going at. Eventually, after some beating, they'll burst into flames. When? It depends on each car. There's no way to tell exactly how much of a beating a car will take until they're wasted, but they look more destroyed the more damaged they are, and you can make an estimate off of that. Of course, we can be wasted as well. If you look to the top right, you'll see a damage meter. If that fills all the way, then you're dead and lose the round. To stop us from being run down by all the AI cars the entire game, there's a fixing hoop. Just fly through that and no matter how damaged you are, you'll get healed to full. The only drawback is that every car in the game can fly through it. Under the damage meter, you'll see the power meter. This is the speed your car is moving at. If it's at full power, you're at top speed. Over time, this bar decreases. To keep it high or increase it, you need to do stunts. While in the air, steering controls change to the direction your car will flip in, and more stunts equals more power. Now, the cars themselves. First, car selection. Here's where you choose your car. I mean, did you expect anything else? But not all of them are unlocked yet. For now, we will be choosing Wow Kaninaro due to the high strength and endurance stat compared to the other four, making it the obvious choice as we're going for wasting. Every two levels, we will unlock a car, with the next car to unlock being at the front of the race always. So for example, we will unlock Max Revenge after finishing stage 2, and it's the leader of levels 1 and 2. <sighs> okay, I know that's information overload, so let's recap. Ram cars to waste them, if damage, fly through the hoop, flip in the air for more speed, we choose this yellow jeep thing for now, and every two levels, we unlock a new car. That's the gist of it. Hey, you. All clips are taken from my stream. Come check it out. The introductory stage. The very first map of our challenge. It's a rectangle that consists of two checkpoints, two ramps, and one hoop. Simple and easy. It's meant for you to learn the mechanics in an easy setting. And I mean, 
listen to the music as well. In my opinion, nothing else screams first level more than this song. It's very fitting for a beginning stage and as an introduction to the game. For racing, the level is generally a cakewalk, and beating it on anything but the first try is crazy to imagine. Going into this level for wasting, I went in with the same mindset and expected to clear it immediately. But I would very soon realize that this was not going to be the case. Come on, this dude has to be almost dead. Oh, that, that one I felt could have gone so well. No! Oh, nice, yes. It died immediately. Seems to have gotten taken. Oh, that was huge. That's massive. This was such a good start. I really hope, like... I hope I get three at least. <laughs> it would be really depressing if I don't. Oh, or if I died. I was getting nowhere. Early on, I realized the easiest way to win would be to restart until I had the three weakest cars. Formula 7, Nimi, and La Vita Crab. Wasting is easier if we have weaker cars to deal with, so it makes sense. The setup was good, but why couldn't I capitalize? Firstly, there were only two checkpoints. Although four laps were a normal amount, all the AI had to do was this, and they would win. I had to somehow get all of them before a single one of them did that oval four times. But that wasn't all. The next thing was the placement of the hoop. Even if I did get one low, the convenient placement of the hoop allowed them to go through while not giving up much. I was stuck, and just blindly throwing myself at the AI over and over would not produce results. I had to change my approach. It is what I should have done, but I didn't. I don't know what I was expecting, just doing the same thing, getting the same results, and getting more frustrated. But all I know is that I would get on and not change anything at all. And I was losing my mental. Just, I think that's it. Oh no! Man! It's anything! Oh well, it doesn't matter! He's being such a little sh dude. I considered dropping this challenge entirely multiple times because. I was going crazy over the first level, and did not even want to imagine what was to come. I told myself I would give it one week and decide from there. <laughs> but guess what happened the very next day? Okay, 407 has been wasted, what was that? That is very damaged. Nice. Okay. That's two. Why is this car just not blowing up? Oh, okay. There we go. Finally. Oh my gosh! Oh. Now other than the excessive moaning, you can hear it in my voice that I was so done, but also glad and relieved. To know I could continue with the challenge felt good. I wish I could say I figured something out or something hit me and that change caused me to win. But I was just lucky. Some of the cars damaged each other and even missed the hoop. Honestly, looking back at my first attempt and seeing me not try any of the other strategies I used later on really confuses me. It 100% made this harder than it should have been. But whatever. 
I'm done and can continue. The next stages don't have much to them. Level 2 is just level 1 with a larger map, while level 3 is a freebie as it literally tells you to beat it by wasting. I finished them pretty fast, so there's no reason to go in depth. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Trying to. Okay. Simple as that. There's a lot of try and waste. Okay. Dang. Yeah, I'm dead. Here. And that's not to say every single map where it's a realize that. Wow. Oh, it missed though because of- Oh, it killed itself! Okay, just one left. Nice. Nice. Okay. And that is stage three done. Beating three levels in quick succession, with two of them being extremely easy, had me feeling on top of the world. But I would soon be pulled back into the hell of this challenge. Stage four, Grapefruit Power. While the map may look like the longest compared to the others we've seen so far, the main issue lies in the laps. See that? We have one lap to waste every single car. Also, I didn't mention it before, but the new leader, Lead Oxide, is stronger and faster than our current cars. It wasn't a problem in Stage 3 because of the large number of laps and relatively big map size, but now with the time constraints, the threat level has increased a ton. On top of that, look at the placement of the hoop. It is right in front of this ramp. Other times we could have gotten lucky with cars sometimes missing the hoop, but now? It's a guaranteed fix. Oh yeah, there's also two hoops in this map. On the plus side, the second one is out of the way and far away from the ramp. But... There's two hoops! Before I even did this challenge, I expected this to be difficult. But the torture I went through was on an entirely different level. Just keep resetting. It's just really annoying just not being able to go from one round into the next. Will it be like a super long time like before, or will it be, you know, just after once? Oh, Max Revenge got wasted. I got flown across the map. Where am I going? Where am I? What direction am I supposed to go? This way? I think so. I've never had the. What? I mean, I, something could have come from that, but I just got launched way too far for anything to matter. Yeah. Oh, that was huge. That is, that is really, really nice. Wow, well, okay, that is the ricochet of Nimi into Red Oxide. Oh no. If I see them go up that path, then I'm just gonna reset. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's cool. Completely broken up though. Can I. Oh! To see if you can get Nimi and Lead Oxide somehow. Oh, wait, 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 okay. I am like literally one hit away. How am I still alive? Oh no, wait, I have to go for the side pit. No! Uh, I had to. I had to. Throughout the entire time with this stage, I went in with different mindsets of what I believed the best strategy was. When I first started, I thought Max Revenge was the optimal car due to the greater racing speed. But I reverted to Wow Canyon Auto after a short while due to the endurance being more valuable, as I can't really afford to divert my path to heal. I'm in a race against time here, after all. Other than that, I didn't make any changes. Just like level 1, I was trying to beat it primarily based on luck. 
This was the car setup I used, and the first thing you would question is, why am I using the other strongest car? Two reasons. First, my initial thought process was, I'll have a second car to waste for me, and because it gets damaged wasting other cars, it'll be easy for me to follow up. That idea went as well as you could possibly imagine. But I was still sticking with it. What could possibly make me stay with this seemingly garbage car setup? What just happened? What? I blinked and then... Huh? Dude, what is happening? Okay. That's two. Lead oxide looks really low. Uh, we could get this. That would be huge. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I'm like right there, but this is just ridiculous. No, it's trying, it's trying to end. Oh my gosh. No! If I can lead him away, it's a slight amount. Oh, no, that's it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I know. I threw that. Continuing on, that's the reason why I stayed with the setup. Once again, relying on luck. Now, not only was I resetting for cars, but the placement of those cars also. But that's not all. That glitch didn't happen every single time, because it only worked if Lead Oxide didn't move and the three of us hit each other. So now, I was waiting for not only the cars and their placement, but also how they moved at the start. But that's not all! You need to remember that there are two other cars that can only move in a straight line! So now, I was waiting for the You get the point. The criteria for this to happen was way too slim. And most of my gameplay was not even me playing the game. <laughs> After hours spent going for this with no results, I had to accept the fact that luck couldn't work here. My only other option was to get good. The first thing I found was related to power. You know how I said earlier that power affected your speed, right? Well, there's actually another part to it. Not only does it increase your speed, but it increases your toughness. So your hits are harder, and you can take much more. I had no idea the importance power had, and it explains a lot. Why sometimes in stage 1 I would get hit and blow up or tank tons of damage and barely lose any health. As for the second, you remember how I said cars are strong or weak and we can exploit that? Well they also have a personality type based on their stats. What do I mean? Cars like Formula 7 and Nemi being super weak only race. They will avoid anything to do with wasting at all costs. Lead Oxide and Max Revenge, on the other hand, love to race as well, but if they are challenged, like chasing them from behind or hitting them, they will become aggressive and will actively try to attack you. Theoretically, you can focus on the weaker cars first, and once they're dealt with, you can draw the others away from the checkpoints. After learning these two pieces of information, it's like my whole world shifted. Instead of focusing on luck, I realized there was so much more I could be doing. From then on, I put all my effort into learning how to manage wasting, healing, and doing stunts. I swapped back to my initial car setup and began the grind to get good.
absolutely destroyed multiple times. Or, I mean, I don't know, everything just seems to be going by so much faster. Okay, 407 gets that, but it didn't go through the checkpoint, I don't believe. So I can intercept you on the way back. Yeah. Okay, 407 has been wasted, that's nice. Okay, I have to see if I can stop Nimi now. I have to somehow manage both these cars. Right now, this is a fairly good run that I have here. Mm, I think by going for this, though, I, I mess it up. Oh, what happened there? I'll just go for Lead Oxide for now. I think I lose this one as well, but I'll just keep playing it out. Just, you know, in case. Okay, that's three. Now I have to try and get lucky here. I, I'm pretty sure I just, uh, Nimi just needs to get one more checkpoint and then I'll lose. Um, so, I have to try and stop that. This could potentially be it, as long as I don't mess it up. Oh, oh my gosh! I'm done. I was not expecting that to be it. At all. There was- both of them just had one more lap to go. I've beaten, beaten stage, stage four. 4. Those are the words I spoke after beating level 4. And yes, I was at a loss for words at the time because of the ridiculous length I spent trying to complete it. But although I was glad, I knew we weren't out of the woods yet and my happiness would soon be short-lived because the leader of five and six had the potential to be our hardest challenge by far. El King is the strongest car in the game, period. Its AI doesn't attempt to race because it knows it will win in a waste battle. It will camp at checkpoints, chase you down, and will not stop until it gets you or another car. Level 5 is literally called He's Coming For You Next because it will get you. Most of the time you are going to race this stage because you want to avoid facing him at all costs. The problem is that we can't avoid him, and do have to face him head on. Although our car did get an upgrade, I have no clue how long it will take to finish this stage. It could take longer than stage 4, we might not even be able to finish- And we unlock the king. Huh? Yeah, so for some reason, it wasn't hard at all. I just ran into him repeatedly and then, oh, it's dead. And, uh, oh, it's dead. The other cars weren't much of a problem either because I had a second entity helping me complete my goal. Stage 5 had so many laps, nothing can finish, and Stage 6, although a bit harder due to the size of the map and less laps, was basically the same thing. I think my knowledge I learned from Stage 4 just made these levels ridiculously easy. So yeah, 5 and 6 are done, and now we have the car I'll be using for the rest of the game. Just like level 3, Stage 7 is another freebie. It's the level after you unlock El King, so the developers wanted to reward you, and allow you to try it out. They gave you a small map with a decent amount of laughs, and it's the only map in the game which has these... walls? Above the tracks? Its purpose seems to only be something for the AI to get stuck on. Because, I mean... What do they even do? I predicted it to be so easy, I reset my first run. I, no, 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 I'm restarting that because I want to be the one that wastes everyone. If I didn't get it on this try, I would look like a complete idiot. There we go. 
Look at this, you just run people over. Wow, no one's dying. What am I doing? I need to get prepared. Ha. <sighs> okay. Can I get fixed? That is the question. Probably not, actually. I think they place it in a way that I cannot get fixed. So, let's just run at them, see what happens. You're solo. No, what am I doing? I think you might die if you miss. No. There. All right, one more. Oh, but you're full HP. Might just lose here. Okay, I traded. Well, it counts? The way the game works is that as long as the other cars are wasted, you're fine. So even though I got wasted, it doesn't matter. And I already know what's coming. Uh, you didn't actually waste all the cars in stage 7 like you said, so it doesn't count. I counted it because while I technically didn't get the last hit, I did most of the damage, and the AI chose to run into those walls I was talking about. I'm counting it, and if you have a problem, I'm sorry. Onwards to stage 8. We reached another point where even before I started this challenge, I predicted this would be one of the most difficult ones. It's hard for the exact opposite reason from level 1. If you remember, stage 1 was a rectangle, and one of the main problems was its tiny size, allowing for ease of access to all checkpoints. Stage 8, on the other hand, was entirely different. It's so fucking big. While huge maps were beneficial to us in the past and will continue to be for the future, the core problem is not the size of the map, but rather how the map is laid out. Let's look at all the maps I would deem as large. See the common factor between all of them? They overlap or loop back on themselves throughout the course. That's not the case for stage 8. It is wide. With us playing the slowest car in the game, this creates a lot of difficulty. Once again, I didn't mention the new leader, because for stage 7, it didn't matter. But for stage 8? I'll ask you turn your attention to the title. Fast and the Furious plus the Radical. Now let's look at the car's name. Huh. It's almost like this stage is built specifically to maximize this car's potential. Radical 1 is the second fastest car in the game. Only Formula 7 beats it. But the other stats are incomparable. It is the second strongest slash highest endurance stat car we've met up to this point, losing only to El King in both, and is the best at handling, acceleration, and stunts, making it the best car in the game to race by far. The map complements all of these things by creating long straightaways with huge ramps. Once again, making it, by far, the best map to race. As we're going for wasting, we can't even make use of these, because chasing them with our low speed isn't going to work. So I need to cut them off. However, by doing that, and crossing large sections, my power is going to be low. Creating a situation where, although I have high base stats, my power would be much lower compared to the other cars. Not to mention the only hoop is in a place that is practically impossible for me to reach. I am required to somehow waste this car and all of the others on low power in one life. I had no clue where to start, but I had to do something. You see, this is the part where I would put some clips that have my failed attempts, but my entire stream that day, I did stage 8, didn't actually stream. So all that footage is just non-existent. To summarize, 
Because of the spacious map, I had to approach wasting in a different way. I couldn't just chase and wait for them to slam into a wall. Although it seemed like it would waste a lot of time, I had to cross the entire map, get enough power so I had enough speed and strength, and position myself properly to hit them. It was very daunting, and I was ready for another stage 4 incident. I booted up day 2, mentally preparing myself for the marathon I was about to begin. It started as I expected, sometimes good runs, but mostly restarts. It was looking like another grindy day for the many that were to come. But then, I got this run. By some miracle, the cars lined up perfectly for me to get a solid hit on both of them, instantly wasting one and severely damaging the other. After that, it was up to me to just go around and waste the rest. While I do feel I drove pretty well, especially against Lead Oxide, with my camera control and positioning, there's no doubt that getting that hit shortened the time for me to complete the level by a large portion. But I'm not one to complain if good things happen to me. I beat it, and I am not going back. We're now down to the last couple of stages. And as always, because we unlocked Radical 1, a new leader has to appear. But what could possibly top any other car we've seen until now? I already said before that El King is the strongest car in the game, and Radical 1 is the best in racing. So, surely, the next car can't be that good? Well, let me introduce you to the new leader of stage 9 and 10, who not only is tied with El King in strength, but has comparable racing stats to Radical 1. I bring you Dr. Monster in his first map, The Beach Arcade Dream. Now the good thing is the map itself is really easy. It's pretty big while looping on itself multiple times throughout the course. As stated before, our main problem is Dr. Monster. He shares the exact same strength stat as El King, and upon reviewing the stats to make this video, it actually has more endurance. I didn't even know that. Coupled with the fact that the speed, acceleration, and handling stats are comparable to other racers we've seen so far, makes this the best all-around car. This is a problem because not only can it take and deal hits, but with its superior speed and handling, if it chose to, it could ignore me. Which ended up happening so many times. Like, what? Hello? I'm sorry, but that's just... Huh. A few runs into this, and I was already getting increasingly frustrated. I was not looking forward to what was to come. Wow. I don't know what it, it's just not trying to waste me at all. You're a waster. We're the second strongest car in the game, and you're just ignoring me. Okay, well, that went to the check. Yeah, it's just okay. What? Look, it's just zooming. I think I lose here, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Alright, just one more again. Moment of truth. Does this signal the end of the race? No, it isn't. There's still one more lap. Okay, let's see if I could make something come of this. Where am I going? What am I doing? 
I literally have like an entire lap to just waste this one car and I'm gonna Whoa, look at that! Where did he go? This is going to be very close. Ah. You see, I can't counter that because it runs straight into the checkpoint and then it counts. So, there's nothing I can do there. Dr. Monster has to be super low. Please tell me... Uh, no, I think that's the end again. Wow, this, yeah, this is going to be really annoying. Oh no, that's not, it's, there's still one more lap. Okay, nice. To pass this stage, I didn't really do much innovating. It was just me understanding how the AI liked to dodge in certain scenarios and eventually predicting them. And when I say them, I mean Dr. Monster only. The other cars were dealt with almost immediately, and I was left in a 1v1 the majority of the time. Eventually, it just worked out. I still, after looking at this clip multiple times, have no clue if it just missed the checkpoint and decided it needed to get fixed, or if I had another lap to work with. Whatever the case, I beat it anyway. And now we reach stage 10, the penultimate level. And it's a bit of a weird one. To understand why it's so weird, we need to rewind and learn about a mechanic of the game I didn't mention before. You see, I never talked about it because it wasn't important to you, the viewer, to know it to understand the video. You most likely have seen it, as it's in all my footage, and could tell what it was, but if you didn't, this arrow is the thing. By default, it points to the next checkpoint but you can switch the mode to point to the nearest car. With a different key press, I can open up a minimap and see where all the cars are in real time. As you can imagine, this is vital to waste because you can't hit any car if you don't know their location. So why am I bringing it up now when there's only two levels left in the game? Because, you see, I relied on it heavily throughout the course of this challenge. And now, it's gone. Dr. Monster is still the leader here, so that's another problem added. But not everything is against us. Looking at the pan for this map, there is no question that it's the longest map in the game. It loops on itself more than I care to count, and the distance between those loops are pretty close by. We can see most of the map from our starting location. The hoop even happens to be in the same area. So although it's really easy to lose a car, you can either just go for another, or find the one you were chasing pretty easily. So with all that said, there's nothing left to do other than go for it. Usually from what I see though, it, this map shouldn't take very long. Hopefully. Surely. Surely. Okay. That's one. But for today. Oh, Dr. Monster's already wasted? How? How? What? I forgot what the last car was. There's Radical one here. And then... Oh, Nimi. Okay, yeah, that should be fine. I then proceeded to beat it this run, but my stream decided to crash again. By some miracle, I beat it in 10 minutes when I restarted it back up, largely due to the fact that half of the AI ran into me. I wish I could talk more about my process in beating these stages, but there wasn't a process. I just kind of knew what I was doing at this point. Restart until I get weak cars. If it's a good start, like getting a big hit or waste early on, then continue. If not, then quit and try again until I did. While I didn't expect an insane difficulty spike from these last levels, it was kind of shocking how I was blitzing through them. Well, ignoring all that, there's just one more level to go. This is the Mad Party. 
I know I said this is the final level, but with an incredibly small map and 10 laps, you already know I beat it on my first try. I'm just gonna have the footage play in the background while I talk over it. It was honestly great revisiting one of my favorite childhood games in a way that I hadn't before. Even though it may have been frustrating at certain points, it was satisfying seeing that end screen every single time. We beat level 1 after trying many times and getting lucky. Levels 2 and 3 were completed with almost no difficulties. Level 4, being honestly the hardest stage of the run, forced me to learn a lot of the mechanics of the game. Levels 5 and 6 were so much easier than I originally thought they were going to be. Level 7 on the other hand, I almost lost a map I expected to clear immediately. Even though I didn't make a bet or anything, I was still nervous when I saw my health bar getting up there. Stage 8, sadly I lost a lot of the footage, but trust me, it would have been another annoying level if I didn't end up getting that hit off. While it was a kind of anticlimactic finish, we overcame Dr. Monster on stages 9 and 10. While this challenge may not have been the most difficult or annoying thing in the world, I may not have gone grey or pulled my hair out over the course of doing this. But looking back after completing it, putting a tiny bit of a challenge onto a game I remember so fondly. As I beat level 11, I can proudly say, I am a radical gamer. If you stayed up until this point, thanks. I appreciate it. All music is in the description, or if you prefer, the title appears at around the starting point of each song in the video. If you want to try the game for yourself, download it using the link below or just type Need for Madness on Google. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing. It lets me know you enjoy the content and I should continue to make these. Once again, I stream almost every day at 8.30pm PST on twitch.tv slash Delefantuno. Thank you for sticking through to the end. That's it for me. See you in the next video.